All right, guys, today we're making corker bows. So I have three colors, because I'm making red, white, and blue corker bows, and these are 3 8 inch gross grain ribbons. You can also use 1 quarter inch gross grain ribbons, um, but it's important that it's gross grain. The um, width isn't as important. So I also have dowels and clothes pins, and the first thing we're going to do is attach uh, one of your colors of ribbon. You attach one end of the, clothes, the dowel with a clothes pin. And then you're just going to spin it around, getting them as close together as possible. I find it's easiest to spin and then push it up. Spin, 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 and then push it up. So that's the fastest way that I have found to wrap these dowels. And you need six dowels for every bow. About six dowels. It depends on how many, how fluffier you want, but I found that six dowels oh, gives me nice. six to eight corker pieces and then I'm able to make a very fluffy bow. You need about 18 to 20 corker pieces for each bow. This is a an involved bow to make, but in the end it's super cute and you always get a ton of compliments. So once I get to the end, I use another clothespin and I clip it over and then I take my scissors and cut off the end. Now I'm going to repeat that five more times and since I have three colors, I'm going to do two dowels of each color. So I'm going to speed this up for you here. Um, I'll do two white, two red, two blue. Um, also you'll see at some point, I got these dowels in three foot pieces and then I used my miter saw to cut them down to three dowels per piece because it was the cheapest way. I made each dowel at 20 cents. Um, but the sticker kind of less them adhesive which makes me move a little slower at some points that you can't tell them the speeding up. But if you, if you have time to clean that off it's helpful but if not it doesn't hurt the process anyway. So once they're all done, I get out my cookie sheet. I have cookie sheets just for crafting because I think that's just easier. And I'm going to line up all of these on the cookie sheets and you bake them in the oven for a half an hour at 250 degrees. I always forget it's okay if they cook longer. But once they're done, you pull them out and pull off all of your clothespins. True story, I've left these in for a couple of hours and that just means you're curls will just never go away. It's not a big deal if you forget about them in the oven at 250 degrees. So, um, but pull off all the clothespins and then I'm going to take the ribbons. I kind of loosen them up and if I have any of that adhesive, I, it helps to like, I have to do that separately because it doesn't slide right off because the adhesive kind of sticks to the ribbon. But once you loosen everything up, you can just usually pull the dowel right out. So I'm going to do that with all six of them. Just pull those dowels right out, and I should be able to speed this up here. And they're kind of fun like this, like those shoelaces from back in the day. So once they're all pulled out, we need to start cutting them into pieces. I cut the end off of each one first, and then for me, I count seven loops. I make sure that end is touching the table, and then I count seven bumps and then I make a cut at the top. That's just how I do it. If you like them shorter, you can do them shorter. If you like them longer, you can do them longer. Whatever number you find works for you. But seven for whatever reason is what I end up doing. So you're going to cut. Now from you get about three to four pieces from each each uh, about foot of ribbon, curled ribbon. So I found that I got eight from the red, but I only got six from the blue, and then I got about seven from the white, and it's all different. So what I'm gonna do now is since the smallest number I got was six, I'm going to do six of each color. If I had seven of each color, I probably would have done seven since they're already made and cut. So there you go, I have six of each color, and now comes the, the hardest, most, time-consuming part of this process is the fray check. You should go through with, you can use fray check is the name of a product that you can use. Um, it, it looks like a glue that you just put on the ends. I personally think this is cheaper and easier to just grab a lighter and you just really quickly fire each end and it melts the end of the ribbon so it doesn't, it doesn't fray. Either way, I, I don't like having anything harmful unnecessarily in my house and the fray check kind of freaks me out. So I personally just do the lighter because lighters already get put up high. So I separate back out my colors and now it is time to put the bow together. And for this I use a needle and thread and I just pull off a piece of probably about 18 inches or so of thread. It's not, it doesn't have to be anything exact. You're going to cut most of it off, most of it off in the end anyways. So thread the needle 
true story. It took me much longer than it looks in this video to thread that needle. But you know, you didn't want to watch that. <laughs> so start with whatever color you want and you're going to stick it right through on top of the needle in the middle of the ribbon. And then you go in order, in whatever order you want, and start stacking all of your ribbons on top of the needle. The longer the needle, it, the easier it is. So this needle is probably about two inches long and it was perfect for making these bows. So add them all on top until you get to the very end. And then you're going to push that needle all the way through. It's hard to find it sometimes when all those curls. Pull it all the way through and you're going to take it back right through all of the layers to the back. And pull it. There you go. Sometimes it gets caught on a ribbon. But, and then I make, I don't just double knot this, I make like six knots in the back just to make sure that it doesn't, because you don't want it all to fall apart. So I make probably, I think I average about six for whatever reason, I don't know. You'd probably be fine with double knot, but I always would rather do more than less. And then you trim off the excess and the bow part is done. How cute is that, right? You can kind of separate the curls and fluff it up. How fun is that? Here. Is a closer look. This one's going to be super fun for the 4th of July. But you can make them in spring and holiday colors. You can do whatever you wanted. So I have a ribbon covered clip already and then I just have to attach it to the back. It's that simple. Once you've put it all together you just attach it to your clip and you are good to go. Now I made these for a bunch of people and so I made these cute little milk boxes. They look like the old school milk cartons and so I put all a bunch of those together and then after you pull up all your glue strings, it's ready to be packaged and given either as a gift or to a friend or whatever you have. So thank you guys so much for watching and hit that thumbs up and I will talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs>